Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ma ba'd. What is the position of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah? Ma Ahl Bid'ah wa Ahwa. The position of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Those people who come together based on the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the methodology or understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah, their position regarding those people who innovate and change acts of worship and change and bring into new ideologies and new concepts into Islam is one which can be summed up in some of the statements of the Salaf. And we'll just read a couple of statements that our Shaykh, Shaykh Sa'id al-Halayl hafadhullah ta'ala has compiled in his book called, entitled An-Nasiha. وقال إمام أبو عثمان إسماعيل الصابوني رحمه الله تعالى حكاية عن أهل السنة ويبغضون أهل البدع الذين أحدثوا في الدين ما ليس منه ولا يحبونهم ولا يصحبونهم In the book entitled عقيدة السلف أصحاب الحديث by إمام الصابوني Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he mentioned and summarized the position of Ahlul Sunnah with regards to Ahlul Bid'ah. He said that they have hatred for Ahlul Bid'ah. Those who bring new things into the religion, try to innovate new things in the religion that is not from it. They do not love them and they do not have them as companions. وقال فضيل بن عياد رحمه الله تعالى من أحب صاحب البدع أحبت الله عمله وأخرج النور الإسلامي من قلبه and this was a narration that was in Imam Babahari's kitab شر السنة that was narrated on فضيل فضيل بن عياد Rahimahullah Ta'ala, who said, whoever loves a person of bid'ah, of innovation, then Allah will erase his good deeds, erase his deeds, and take him from the light of, and take the light of Islam from his heart. Those are just a couple of narrations from the Salaf, and there are so many if you go back to the books of the Salaf of this Ummah. And they summarize for us how what our position should be. Should we be light and should we be always kind and gentle with those people who clearly distinguish themselves from Ahl Sunnah and take a minhaj and methodology other than the Salaf of this Ummah? There is a time when we look at the details of those ulama, the muhakkikun, that study these issues and look into details and look at the, the narration of the Salaf. And of course, first and foremost, from the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, showing us that there's a time to sometimes be gentle and a time to sometimes be stern in enjoining the good and forbidding the evil. That it has it comes down to the maslaha and the mafsada, meaning the, the benefits and the harms, they have to be weighed. That if you feel there's going to be more safety in your religion, or more safety, or uh, you know, protecting the community from that person, and it requires being stern with them, then that is the time for sternness. And if you feel otherwise, the opposite, not of course we're using our feelings to determine this, but this is based on ilm, on knowledge, and fiqh, and understanding, and basira, insight, and wisdom, and hikmah. And this comes from ahl ilm. That if you have the ability to determine those things and you can weigh the mufasid with the musalih, looking at the benefits and the harms, this will give you the tools to determine how to interact with someone who has left the sabil, 
al-mu'minin, the sabila ahl sunnah not meaning they've left Islam, but meaning they've left the, the minhaj, the methodology of ahl sunnah wal jama'ah. So we have to know that ahl bid'ah has different levels, and how we deal with them, in, depending upon the situation at hand, that there's different ways to deal with them. But we know the asl, and the general position of the salaf, was that it was stern. Because they knew that they were preserving the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from innovation, from change. And just think a little change back then, how that would even a hundred years after those imams died, how that would have uh, played out and how it did play out. So what about now, 1300, 1200 years later after some of our salaf? How has the bid'ah evolved? And that, bec that happens in a situation when we become weak and we tolerate people with new ideologies. For example, now many of the Muslims, they hold fast to dem democracy more than they do the Sharia, more than they do the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. They actually, some begin to almost worship by that ideology. They want to protest. They want to... Uh, get their rights on this and get their rights on this by any means, by taking leadership. They're disple displeased with leadership, so they make takfir of them. All of these ideologies are un-Islamic, and they all bring about a type of harm to the general community that we are witnessing even to this day from some of the events that have happened in more recent times. And this has to do with being soft with Ahl Bidah. And so it is important for us to know the position of Ahl Sunnah and know that regardless, even if the people attack you physically or they attack you in your honor or whatever it may be, that we still have to stand strong for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His religion and stay firm, planting the flag of the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and protect us from kufr shirk with hypocrisy and protect us from the harm of Ahl Bidah with Zandaka and protect us from the Shia and protect us from the Ru'afid, those people who attack our brothers and sisters in Yemen, who attack our brothers and sisters all around the world. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and protect our brothers and sisters in Syria and in Egypt and wherever they may be going through tri uh, crisis and turmoil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.